in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight is one night you will not forget in a hurry. So prophetically that tonight is one night you will not forget in a hurry. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, let tonight be one of those memorable nights in your life of destiny. May my God arise and show up for you like a mighty terrible one in the name of Jesus and I speak to you prophetically these Egyptians you see today in the name of Jesus Christ who died and rose again you will see them no more forever 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 other name the name of Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach the begotten of the Father and tonight we decree and declare over the regions of the heavens across this territory that in the name that is above every other name every name that is not of the Christ and every spirit that is not of the Christ we command that it back to the Lordship of Christ tonight in the name of Jesus Christ worthy worthy is the Lamb worthy worthy is the 
granted our father his eminence we decree and declare that the gates are finally open tonight in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please I want you to be very very sensitive tonight when uh, you are here on ground or you're following by way of television or any of the internet platforms you see there are moments in the life of an individual a definite kairos moments and such times would require high level discernment you can miss a season and you would have to wait a long time again. The Bible says there was a man who sat at a place called Bethesda for 38 years. I'm sure after five years, the man would believe that by the sixth year, he will be born. All right. I told you time does not change anything. The day you get angry and dissatisfied, you can call that day your today. May it be that someone would not postpone his or her today until next year. You can insist and say today is my today. For a miracle, for a testimony, to see the mighty and marvelous hand of God rest upon my life. For a man of God today, tonight can be your tonight. To rewrite the story of the call of God upon your life. The Bible says to make your, to give all diligence to make your calling and your election sure. That means it is your responsibility to stop people from doubting the validity of your call.
measured a thousand cubits, he said, and it was to my feet. That was a realm and a level. Then a thousand cubits, and it was to my knees. Then a thousand cubits, and it was to my loins. And then he says, a thousand cubits, and it was a river overflowing. That everywhere that river went, the fish that was dead would come back to life. Who is God speaking to tonight? Tonight is a night of resurrection for someone. In the name of Jesus Christ, a night of resurrection for someone. I know you have rolled the stone and even sealed it. But the master demands that the stone be rolled away. Because Lazarus is about to come forth. In the name of Jesus. He said, he took me in the spirit of the Lord. And to a valley. That that valley was full of bones. And it was very dry. He said, son of man. Can these bones. Can this ministry. Can this mantle return again. Son of man. Can this call be revalidated again. And the prophet said, only thou knowest. And he said, prophesy, prophesy, and speak to this boat. All oh, bones, he says, hear ye the word of the Lord. And the Bible says he prophesied, and life came. Then he said, speak to the four winds. Oh wind, he says, breathe upon this slain. And there arose an exceeding great army. Tonight, no matter the price you have to pay, please open up your spirit. I want you to know, discern what God is doing tonight. This is more than a conference. There is a switch happening in the spirit. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Gates are opening here tonight. For the kings to arise, for revival to return. For the kings to be born, for revival to return. Yeah. Ali, Ali, oh. Ali, oh. Ali, Ali, oh. shortly but just listen when I came in and I sat down there you notice I was silent while I think it was this lady who was ministering the Lord opened my eyes and what I saw was a woman in labor about to give birth this is what I saw and it was as though she was going to lose the pregnancy and I saw a hand that reached and she just pushed it says as soon as Zion travails please hear me for someone that which the devil meant that you will have bought a parakosh kadiata, kebrekatekata. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. Shabrekatebekata, kabrateke parikatosiata, heredas kota parikatosiata. I've come as a prophetic midwife tonight, in the name that is above all names. Shanegeteketa, kebrekatoskateketa. Are there men and women of prayer in this place? Shameketa katosh. Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ 
in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not wasting your time. It takes discernment to experience them. This is one of the graces I am praying that will return back to the church. Less about spiritual things. Spiritual things are beyond the realm of science. You must discern the operation of the spirit. It says of the sons of Issachar, men that had the understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. You are going to be seated shortly, but there are two people here. You are called into the prophetic ministry, but the level of grace you are walking in, I'm not seeing that fire. And the Lord is, I'm seeing an eagle. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is telling me he's restoring that mantle. For some of you, you used to walk very mightily. Bring them out, please. In the realm of the prophetic. But something happened. I'm seeing an eagle. There is a restoration of the eyes that see and the ears that hear. Where are those who have been called to speak the counsel of the Spirit across the nations? May that man to fall, young and old, male and female. I stir up that well of the prophetic from your spirit, man. I stir up that prophetic in the name of Jesus Christ. Ghana, you are a territory that has a rich investment of the prophetic and anyone who is not yet a partaker of that grace and your call demands it. I come tonight by the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare, may the heavens over you be opened and may that grace rest upon you. upon you in response to your prayer and fasting let it rest upon you let it rest upon you I open a new prophetic vista in the name of Jesus the son of the living God Say you've touched 
be all the praise and the glory. The Lord brought you here tonight to surprise you. This is like stroke, like I don't know if it's paralysis or stroke. Look at this. Please take it easy with him. Support the gentleman. In the name of Jesus, let there be perfection over your body. Right now, I stretch my hands. In the name you will have the last laugh over this situation by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone from a distance you could not see very well. I think your right eye. Right now the power of God is coming on you. You will be able to see me on stage right now. I don't know who that person is. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare, you are not completely blind. But that one that could not see, in the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be healing for you right now. Let there be healing for you right now. In the name of Jesus. This woman is out for the same situation. Look at me, madam. How long has this been? Five years. Walk. Look at this. She could not walk for five years. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord do us good tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. Let's celebrate Jesus. Return to your seat. And let's have a word. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I came determined tonight that God must visit someone very definitely. And whatever price it will take, in the name of Jesus, we declare that your victory must happen tonight. Let me share a few thoughts and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. Again, I want to truly honor His Eminence, our Father, the Archbishop, I'd like us to bless the name of the Lord for his life. We honor you, sir, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for making this available. Only heaven will tell the lives that continue to be changed on account of your sacrifices, sir. Thank you. We honor you in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. I thought to share a bit along the lines of the team bridging the gap. And I'm not really preaching tonight, just to share a few thoughts and then we'll pray. But tonight's exhortation, if I would call it, is not just for the membership of Action Chapel. It's not even just for the church in Ghana. This is a very prophetic charge, even to the body of Christ across the continent of Africa and then across the globe as God will grant us grace. So I want you to listen very, very carefully. I looked up the word gap, G-A-P, as an attempt to structure my message. And I found a few expressions that caught my attention. You know, that gap talks about a crack, talks about a hole, you know, talks about an interval. But I decided to coin out two expressions that I believe capture the word gap to my soothing. Number one, that the word gap means a break in continuity. A break in continuity. When you talk about a gap, among the many meanings and expressions, it means a break in continuity. The inability to continue a process. A gap. Number two. An interruption to consistency. When you talk about the word gap, it suggests an interruption to consistency. 
you are safe to say because a process, the consistency of a process have been altered by whatever factor. You can say a gap has been created. So prophetically, this conference seeks to bring back consistency to certain spiritual processes and certain spiritual protocols that have been severed for many reasons and on account of many factors. And I want you to please listen. For the purpose of my discussion tonight, the Spirit of the Lord inspired me to speak along four areas. Four areas where the body of Christ is currently experiencing a big gap and a big divide. And God has set up platforms including this conference to bridge that gap. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. Very quickly without wasting your time. I'm going to share along the lines of four areas. And please, I want you to write and listen. Lend me your attention. Lend me your concentration. This is a very prophetic message. Four areas where for whatever reason, the body of Christ has experienced an interruption as far as spiritual consistency is concerned. This is true for Ghana. This is true for Nigeria. This is true for many other African nations. This is true for Europe, the US, the Caribbean, as far as your mind can reach. Number one, the first area where God seeks to bridge the gap, are you ready now? Is the divide between authentic Christianity and counterfeit Christianity. Listen carefully. There is an ever-growing widening of this gap between authentic Christianity and what we know and call to be counterfeit Christianity. Hallelujah. It is very difficult, especially for the young man in this generation to theologically articulate who a Christian is. We use many non-biblical parameters as a measure of true spirituality and spiritual health. There must be a restoration of the biblical parameters that define who an authentic Christian is as against counterfeit Christianity. Are we together? More than parameters like preaching prowess. More than parameters like skill and giftings. It is important that there be a restoration to the body of Christ. Doctrinally and theologically, the average believer in Ghana, in Africa, and across the globe must be able to know who a Christian is and who a Christian is not. If we cannot spell this divide clearly, a generation will come that will not know the difference between the God of the Bible and any other God again. Hallelujah. For starters, the Bible tells us clearly, Apostle John was writing his epistle and he said, this is the testimony, the record, he says, that God has given us eternal life but that he structured the administration of eternal life such that until and unless you encounter the son, you cannot have that life. You will be amazed to know how many people today, preachers, sadly, members, workers in church, writers of Christian books that genuinely encountered the son of God. An encounter with an angel does not translate to salvation. An encounter with a preacher does not translate to salvation. In fact, an encounter with a church does not translate to salvation. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. Longevity in church does not equal salvation. Being given a Christian appointment to serve does not equal salvation. The ability to speak words that are consistent with scripture, as well-meaning as it is, 
does not equal salvation. There needs to be for starters a restoration of the biblical pathway to becoming a Christian. Hallelujah. A few months ago, I was inspired by the Spirit. And I brought a message to the body of Christ called the Purified Church. It was an attempt to reveal seven deadly sins that the Lord put in my spirit to lovingly, not from a standpoint of condemnation and sarcasm, but to be able to open the body of Christ to that until and unless his bride is purified from these six deadly sins, we will never be able to bring forth the portrait of authentic, prophetic and apostolic Christianity. Let me run through the list. We are still looking at point one. I am not going to explain, but I will just state. The first breach, the first gap that needs to be closed is the divide between authentic Christianity and counterfeit Christianity. The Lord gave me seven deadly sins that he told me is eating up his body and there is a need for believers, for churches, for men and women of God to retrace their steps. Now, this is not a call to condemnation, but it is a charge to call the body of Christ to a higher level of accuracy in our work with God. Number one, the first sin that the Lord revealed to me that the body of Christ needs to be able to retrace our steps from is immorality and related perversions. There has to be a genuine repentance this is not about pointing fingers. It's about the church taking a corporate responsibility and coming to the Lord and crying with sackcloth and ashes like it was in the days of Nineveh that there be genuine repentance from the plague and the cancer of immorality and all other related perversions. Number two, the sin of lust for money and material things. Money and material things are very important and they add up to the overall efficiency of the believer. But you see, many have made and are making the, the mistake of the rich fool in the Bible. His dependence was around money and material things. He built large bands and said, my soul, find rest. And the Bible says that the Lord told him tonight, your soul will be required of you. Can I tell you, money is important. Prosperity is important. I will never be the preacher that stops God's people from stepping into the abundance that is meant for them. But, but, Christ must be at the epicenter of your pursuit and not things. The moment it becomes an obsession for money and material things, you are already on the path to destruction. The second scene, the body of Christ must be called to manage is our appetite and our loss for money and material things. Sometimes we mistakenly equate material things to spirituality that to the degree to which I have money and abundance of resources, it means I am spiritual. It means my faith is working. It may not necessarily be true. Number three, is God speaking to someone? We are bridging the gap tonight. The third scene that the body of Christ must be called to order from is witchcraft and extra biblical practices. Witchcraft and extra biblical practices. Now I'm speaking apostolically. So I'm speaking to the body of Christ. There are sincere people. In fact, the Bible puts it this way. It said the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. There is a manifestation of a class of spirits called seducing 
spirit. And there is a body of knowledge and truth that the Bible calls the doctrine of demons. You don't have to be evil to be a victim of this. Sometimes it's a product of the kind of mentorship you came under. Sometimes it's a product of the kind of exposure. We live in a world where there is an appetite for power. Justifiably so. There is an appetite for results. There is an appetite to see the grace and the glory of God. Find expression and to be made manifest in a man of God, a business person, a politician. And that search has driven many people into extra biblical practices. In this kingdom, it is not only results that matter. The process that leads to the result matters. If Jesus Christ is not revealed and glorified in the process, then it is not authentic and it cannot give God glory, even if the result is correct. Don't tell me it does not matter. The most important thing I should get the result. No, sir. There must be an operation such that Christ must be revealed in and through that process. Number four. Let's hurry up. Pride, vain glory, and self-centeredness. This is the fourth sin that the body of Christ needs to be purged from. Pride, vain glory, and self-centeredness. There's not much to say there. It is already clear. Pride, vain glory. Number five is called the sin of the tongue. That includes lying. That includes gossip. That includes backbiting and the sowing of the sins of discord. Brethren, joining the heads of people. There are many men of God today who have no problem being at loggerheads except that someone came in between and sowed a seed of discord and went quietly and allowed the program of God to be interrupted. The sin of the tongue. So don't tell me I'm not involved in immorality. Don't tell me I am not proud. The Bible says if a man err not in words, that man is a perfect man. One of the indices that measure spiritual maturity is not miracles. It is order of your speakings. Hallelujah. Are we together? The sin of the tongue. Number six, the sixth sin that the body of Christ needs to be purged from is competition and unhealthy comparison. Competition, competition, competition. I am for Apollos, I am for Paul. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Increase only resides within the office of the Christ. Paul may plant, Apollo may water, but as far as increase is concerned, it is the God of heaven. And him alone that gives increase. Hallelujah. Unhealthy competition. We must get to a point where we have mutual respect and not, and you see, the danger is that the younger generation that is coming are already embracing some of these templates. And if not balanced, there will be disaster and catastrophe. In the body of Christ. Let me hurry up. I promise not to teach on it. Just to list. Number seven. The seed of imbalance. Imbalance. The failure to communicate the whole counsel of God. The failure to communicate the whole counsel of God. Listen, let me tell you the truth. Worse than error is the sin of imbalance. The sin of imbalance means that you do not open God's people to the whole counsel of God. You can embrace all the dimensions in God that are meant for the holistic build-up of believers. These seven deadly sins, I pray that God will grant us grace to reorder our lives as we obtain grace from God to correct these anomalies. Shout amen if you believe. Hallelujah. 
Praise the name of the Lord. I see that there are showers of blessings. Now, <laughs> hallelujah. So let's get back to our teaching. I promise that four, four gaps that must be bridged. Number one, the gap between authentic Christianity and counterfeit Christianity. And all I said was just to buttress on that point. Very quickly, number two, the second gap that a conference like this seem, seeks to bridge is what I wrote here, translating spirituality to a context that transforms society and nations. Listen, this is a great gap that needs to be closed. That means our spirituality must be translated to a context that makes for nation building and the transformation of society. For as long as our Christian experience ends up just with fanatism, without an expression that society can relate with, we will remain a nuisance to civilization. Your love for God, your prayer, your fasting, your word study must be able to translate to a context that society can see the light and the life of God that is at work in you. In Matthew chapter 5, from verse 13, Jesus was teaching what we call the Beatitudes. He says you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savour, he says where it shall it be salted? The assignment of salt is to add taste and to preserve. So Jesus does not just call us sons of God. He doesn't just call us miracle workers. He does not just call us prophets and apostles. Hallelujah. He says we are salt. Then when we go to verse 14, he says you are the light of the world. The light of the world. Someone shout light of the world. One more time, say, I am the light of the world. More than being an apostle and a prophet. Listen to me. The nations are tired of our fanatism. They are waiting for us to translate spirituality into a context that improves society, that can turn lives around spiritually, but it must have a political expression. It must have an economic expression. I vowed as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant. They must be people equipped with intelligence and they must be structurally mentored to be able to be agents of national transformation. Dear servants of God that serve God in the vineyard, Regardless what we are called to do, we must have it at the back of our minds that more than falling up, falling down and standing up, the faith life must do something within us, then do something from within us and flow out to society. When Jesus came, his impact was not just with those who were sick. He was with politicians. He was with business people. He communicated the counsel of God. Jesus would interrupt a crusade to go to the house of one financial person because he knew the implication of influence and transforming systems and structures. There must be an apostolic and a kingdom order a reorientation to the body of Christ. The value of our prayer, our fasting, the value of our accessing the gifts of the Spirit is to help us to be salt and light. Let me tell you something about salt. Women, you know this, it is never too late to add salt in food. There are ingredients when you want to cook, if you do not add them at the appropriate time, that will be the end of it. But even if your meal is already on the table, there is still room to add salt. Who am I speaking to? Because Ghana has been waiting for you. Don't tell me I'm too old. Don't tell me time has gone. You are the salt of the earth, he says. Hallelujah. This is the second bridge. The second gap that needs to be bridged. There is an apostolic 
and a kingdom orientation that the body of Christ must have. Respectfully speaking, you see, the church in Africa for a long time, we have demonstrated excellence in spirituality and that is noble. But we have not been able to translate our Christian experiences to a context that makes for kingdom come. The gospel is twofold. Listen carefully. Number one, there is the message that saves. Number two, there is the value system that translates society. Hallelujah. This is the second bridge gap that needs to be bridged. There are people today in ministry, pastoral ministry, who have no business being in ministry, but they have accumulated a lot of spiritual energy through fasting and prayer and discipleship and they don't know what to do with it because they have not been given an orientation that you must not be on the pulpit to serve the purposes of God. So now, what do I do with my energy for the prophetic? What do I do with my energy? I'm fasting and praying, submitting myself to mentorship. Now I don't know what to do with all this orientation. So we have all kinds of things happening on the pulpit. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He never said you shall be men of God. He never said you shall be prophets and apostles. He calls us witnesses. A witness is a validator of a claim. Is someone learning tonight? There has to be a point of application to our sermons, our teachings, our mentorship platforms. To what end? If I tell the people to fast and pray, if I tell the people to be in a state of consecration, if I tell the man of God to go for the word of God, to what end? Where are we going with those experiences? Purpose is what gives credence to activities. When there are activities without purpose, frustration will be imminent. It is the reason why many people today, respectfully speaking, did you know that in Europe right now, there is a disturbing decline in the Christian faith? Disturbing decline. Because there is now a generation that does not perceive any relevance of the faith life with respect to alternatives like social media, like IT, we have not been able to translate our spirituality to a context that makes it worthwhile to be a Christian. So we have now, through our lopsided approach to the Christian faith, we have given a generation an alternative. Either become a, a Christian and be a mediocre and a failure and be out of touch with the civilization or denounce Jesus and embrace technology and intellectual advancement. Who created that divide? From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be honored. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. Is someone following our discussion tonight? Let me do a very quick recap that the first gap that needs to be bridged is to close the gap the ever-widening divide between authentic Christianity and counterfeit Christianity. Number two, that we must be able to translate our spiritual experiences and give it an expression that transforms society and transforms nations. Daniel, the spiritual, became Daniel, the leader, who reigned through the dispensation of three kings. He translated his spirituality to a context that brought the name, it brought honor to the name of the Lord in Babylon. Joseph the spiritual 
translated his spirituality and was able to buy it profound economic solutions that literally salvaged Egypt and by extension God's covenant people. Number three, the third gap, are you ready now, that needs to be bridged, even in a conference like this, is restoration of honor to leaders and fathers of faith. This is the third gap that must be bridged. Restoration of the concept of honor a generation is gradually losing the value and the orientation of the excellency of honor. We have embraced all kinds of compromises. It has seemed to be marketable today to walk and to live in dishonor. Hallelujah. With showers of blessings, we declare that the rains will cease for the purpose of this conference. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the mystery of the key of David that can shut and can open, we declare in the name of Jesus that the rains stay. Hallelujah. Now pay attention, please. My concern is for you. As for me, this is how he found me. This is how we started preaching. It was not with protocol and we, I mean we preached in the rain and in the sun. So it absolutely makes no difference whatsoever. I'm a believer in excellence but we are, we are more passionate. Rain has no, it is, it's not even a prayer request. I consider it an embarrassment to be interrupted by rain. Are we together? So don't, don't even, listen. Don't, don't even try to feel sorry for me. No. We are not called men of God um, for nothing. It is a covenant to stand behind the cross and to see Jesus lifted. Oh no. Please look up. Malachi chapter 4. Please give us from verse 5 and 6. Behold, I will send Elijah. I hope you know that Elijah is more than a man. Elijah is an apostolic and prophetic system that does two things. Number one, it brings restoration of all things. Number two, is the spirit of judgment upon the wicked. The first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in the man Noah. It's not about a man. There are individuals who personify systems and structures. Elijah as a man is translated to heaven and the system continues in the man John. The same way Jezebel is not just a woman. It is a satanic system that thrives when it is connected to power and governance. So when the Bible says, I send Elijah, he does not mean the man Elijah. Elijah is the spirit that foreruns revival. Every time the move of God is about to come, Jesus can never show up until Elijah goes. Jesus represents the move of God, revival. When Jesus was supposed to come in the flesh, Elijah foran him in John. You call him the Baptist. So when the move of God is about to start in another dimension in Ghana, you will see the sudden manifestation of the spirit of Elijah. Remember again, the assignment of Elijah, number one, is to bring restoration and reconciliation. Number two, the spirit of judgment upon everything that is antichrist. So let's read now. It says, I will send you Elijah the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Verse, five, verse 6. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to their fathers. Lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Please look at me. 
any nation that dishonors the sacrifices and the investments of fathers especially spiritual fathers but then it translates to people who God has helped you see we live in a generation right now where because of civilization westernization and a higher level of orientation it is seeming to be obsolete today to pay attention to the sacrifices of fathers I do not have time I would have shown you the mystery that was adumbrated in Eli and Samuel the Bible says it was at a time when the eyes of Eli was already becoming dim. It is a dangerous thing for your eyes to be dim because the Bible says the eye is the light of the body. And then Eli represents the generation that is living. Samuel was a young boy who was sleeping close to the ark. The Bible says he had the voice of God waking a generation. He was not just a little boy. That was a generation that God was waking and Samuel did something powerful when he got up he went to Eli and he said you call me and Eli said no go back and sleep the boy had access to the voice of God but he did not have access to the stamina that interprets the speakings of God had he remained there he would have had God correctly but because he did not know what to do with the voice the second time he went to Eli Eli said ah I know this writing I understand by reason of my work with God I know how he speaks the next time he speaks to you say speak Lord for your servant hear it can I tell you my dear people just because you have a greater sense of revelation than the fathers just because you can seem to prophesy more than the fathers just because you have accessed higher levels of light by reason of your alignment and you have climbed the back of the sacrifices of many it should never be a basis for dishonor to fathers fathers deserve their honor till the day they transit please listen to me a generation that causes their fathers is a generation that will attract a curse upon themselves even in the midst of knowledge and excellence we need to be careful especially younger ministers do not be like Paul he says much learning make thee mad we have access revelation and mysteries and we have access several things listen when a father fights his son, he loses his honor. But when a son fights a father, he loses his life. There are allocations to these things. There are rules of engagement. There are protocols. The Bible says, Ephesians chapter 6, I believe, is it 6 or 5? From verse 2 and 3. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise. What is the promise? That it may be well with you and that thou mayest live long upon the earth. There are many people today who have all kinds of inexplainable woes in their lives regardless their intellectual prowess, regardless educational achievements and they may not know why. Could it be that you are a victim of the ill speaking of a father? It is dangerous for a father to make a statement and a pronouncement out of his pain. It is only the mercy of God that can bail you. Hallelujah. Jesus himself demonstrating fatherhood in John 17. The Bible says he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he prayed. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. He had to account for all the disciples that were under his care. He says, all that you have given me, I have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture may be fulfilled. Please hear me. Ghana, my charge to you, Africa, my charge to you, let there be a restoration of honor to fathers. 
Are we together? Every man of God who truly names the name of Christ and has served God sincerely. I don't want to know whatever story happened around your life. Provided they have been testaments of sacrifice for the gospel. Sacrifice in politics. Sacrifice in business. You owe them your honor in truth. Let God be the judge of whatever else you are uncomfortable with. But as far as the mandate is upon you, can I tell you the truth? When you dishonor fathers, dishonor is a seed. It brings a harvest. Dishonor is a fruitful seed. It will bring all kinds of harvests. It has been my call to my generation for many years that we must manage our approach to fathers. They deserve their honor in life and in death. You, you may be a great man of God, but you have dishonored your biological parents. And some of them, before they left, they uttered words. Unfortunately, words don't die. Now, it's 10 years since mama left. But she looked at you and said, what you did to me, may you raise people who will do more to you. And look what is happening right now. For anyone here who is a product of the cause of fathers, I stand by the privilege of the election of grace. And I cry to the God of heaven, the one who is merciful and kind. Tonight, may you find mercy. Please hear me. Let me bring a quick balance. And I'm grateful for the liberty that His Eminence has given. The balance here is that let me also encourage, respectfully speaking, fathers across the continent, submission should not translate to slavery. This must be balanced. When Apostle John was writing, he wrote to fathers. an instruction as you have an instruction young men you have an instruction children you have an instruction but by all means please I want you to repent of anything that makes you tempt to fight fathers you may win physically but you are programming wars to your children and your children's children someone shout God forbid one more time I made a personal covenant and a commitment unto God that for as long as I live and as I serve his purposes in the vineyard, I owe any genuine father that I meet across the globe, even if not connected to them directly, by reason of their sacrifices, they have earned my honor in life and in death. third gap, thank you, that must be closed is the gap of dishonor. Please look at me. Young men, when you wake up in the morning, greet your parents. Don't say I'm too old. That is the attitude of unwise people. Are we together? The word father comes from the word Abba. And it means four things. Number one, source. Number two, sustainer. Number three, defender. Number four, originator. Originator. A generation that ignores their fathers is a generation that will perish in pride. Hallelujah. I have the privilege of being close to our fathers of faith back in Nigeria and I've made it a covenant that they are deserving of my honor. Every time God grants me the privilege to be with them and to meet them, I communicate honor in an unashamed way. No matter how high I rise, I have prayed to God, may I never rise to a point where I cannot honor fathers. No, that is absolute pride. 
Listen, people don't just rise out of nothing. Growth and influence is a product of accessing spiritual systems. Honor being the chiefest of them. If the revelation you have translates to dishonor, you are already under attack. If the gift of the spirit working in your life translates to dishonor, you are already under attack. There are people that trained me when I was nothing. Some of them today will see me and almost say, sir, and I will quickly say, please, please, daddy, don't do this. I'm too young to be that foolish. I will not make that mistake. When I came in here and I saw our father, his eminence, I greeted him. The only reason why I hugged him was because he hugged me. I would not be so foolish to come and say, I am Apostle Joshua Selman. And in case that kind of spirit is growing in you, I curse it right now. Honor is not human worship. But let me tell you the truth. You cannot, you don't have the stamina to manage the pain of this honor. Trust me. This honor is dangerous. Number four. Has God spoken to someone tonight? What is the fourth bridge? Are you ready? Restoration of genuine results to the believer's Christian experience. This is the fourth gap. And it is with this that we'll now move into the session of prayers tonight. Restoration of genuine results to the believer's Christian experience. Please look at me. Let me tell you sincerely, we do not serve God because of results. We serve God because we love him. But I assure you by the integrity of God's word, if your Christian experience is barren of genuine results, you will become an embarrassment to yourself and an ineffective witness to your world. John chapter 15 and verse 8, Jesus was speaking and here's what he said. He said, herein is my father glorified. Is that in your Bible? When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Go to verse 16 of 15 now. John 15, 16. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. The word ordained means to legitimize your operation. That you should go and bear fruit. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. He says, therefore let your light so shine before men. Is that in your Bible? That they may see your good deeds and glorify your father who is in heaven. John 17 and verse 1. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, father, the hour has come. Listen, he said, glorify thy son that thy son will bring glory to you. So God is glorified when his sons are glorified. Someone shout results. One more time, shout results. That your life will be an expression of Galatians 1.24. The Bible says, and they glorified God in me. And they glorified God in me. I made up my mind as a leader and as a preacher that I will never do ministry without results. No. Results are important. There, I hope you know that your result is an evangelist. There is a kind of sermon only your results can preach. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Am I wasting your time? Acts 4.33. Let's read it together, please. Are you ready? Is it projected? One to read. And with great power, the Bible says, gave the apostles witness of the resurrection. It says, and great grace was upon them all. How many? When it has to do with the grace of God that empowers you to give witness to the resurrection, it is not for some. results. Ministry without results will, will keep you in unnecessary suspicion 
the Bible says you have a responsibility to make, to give all diligence to make your calling and your election show. Supernatural solutions by the wisdom of God. Supernatural manifestations of his power. Hear me ladies and gentlemen, respectfully speaking, if our father, his eminence did not have results in his life, results of changed lives, healed bodies, lives and nations and kings delivered, I assure you, I know you love him but you will not be here. Can I tell you, people love you but make no mistakes about it, they want to move forward too. If your life is not producing the result that compels them, they will love you from afar and leave you to walk alone. There's, there's nothing to hide. Nobody wants to follow a leader, a man of God, a businessman that does not command results and inspire others to do same. You cannot influence a generation giving stories. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19 says, For the earnest expectation of the creature awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. Not the explanation, the manifestation. John said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we are being called the sons of God. He says, Now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Hear me? You came tonight to be set on fire like the foxes of Samson. That you will go back and begin to command results. Man of God, genuine results. Results of salvation. Results of healing. Results of deliverance. Results of transformed lives. When Jesus saw a tree that was taken from the earth and not giving back in terms of its fruit. He cursed it. In Matthew 25, the Bible says that he gave unto one five talents, to another two talents, to one one talent. According to their several abilities, he expected them to go and produce results. The Bible says after a while, he came to demand stewardship. The one who had five, what did you do with it? He had produced five again. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. The one with two had produced two. The one with one talent said, I know you are a hard man. You like to reap where you have not sown. So I thought to bury your seed, your talent. And he called him wicked and unprofitable servant. Hear me? We read about those today we call God's generals. Men like Smith Wigglesworth, men like E.M. Bounds, great men, R.W. Shambach, these were men who walked upon the earth and operated in dimensions of the spirit that you would think they are exaggerations. There needs to be a restoration of authentic power, authentic results to the church. Let me sing the song I sang yesterday again. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. started with me, we're about to pray. I remember when I started out in ministry, there was one spectacular miracle that God used to announce me and it helped to increase the workings of God through my life. A gentleman who had a broken spine. They were waiting for some doctors to come to the teaching hospital from India or something of that sort to perform a very delicate surgery. And I remember, I had access to the gentleman. 
and it was on phone I was going to pray for him. Now looking back from hindsight, I don't know if I believed something would happen. I just know that I love the Lord. And I remember praying for him and said, gentlemen, he was wearing something, a neck brace, and then it was, it was a, a very damaged spine. I remember praying a simple prayer by faith. And ladies and gentlemen, what would follow after surprised even me, the man of God who prayed. That gentleman removed the neck, um, the collar, the brace, and he checked himself and it was as though it was acting. I remember the gentleman, the phone was still on when he ran to his mother's room and said, mommy, check this. And the last thing I had was Jesus and the phone was off. Let me tell you what happened. By the next day, it was as though people were hearing a rumor. You know how people come to console a family when there is a bereavement. That was how they gathered that gentleman's family to verify. Because this was a situation that was well known. When this gentleman came to me with both x-rays. From that time till the next two or three months, I got calls almost every day. Someone will call and say, listen, I'm a nurse in the hospital. Can you pray for me? There is something I have, but I've not told anybody. I said, so you see, people are looking for solutions, but they want to verify that you have the power to produce the result first. They will not open up in the face of powerlessness. And I made up my mind. I said, Lord, as you send me to the nations, please do not send me with a salmon alone. It will take more than a salmon for the tulip gates of nations to be opened. of all this, you will need the empowerment from heaven. Jesus said, tarry until he be endued with power. Ministry without the power of the Holy Ghost will end up in controversial explanations. It takes power to subdue. In Isaiah chapter 61, the Messianic prophecy, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor. He says that he had anointed me to bind up the brokenhearted, to release them that are bound in prison, to set the captives free, to declare, to open the prison to them that are bound, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Is that in your Bible? He says to comfort all those that mourn. He says to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified ladies and gentlemen the world today is not a world of yes sir without results nobody will tell you yes sir without results we want to see the power of the gospel penetrate systems and structures we must obtain grace from God. There is a dimension of authentic spiritual power that must rest upon us. Not just power for miracles, but the grace to be able to shift the spiritual climate of nations. And I made a vow unto God that if it depends on me, then this generation will not fail. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. 
whatever you want to do Lord you can do through me whoever you want to lift Lord you can lift through me whoever you want to change Lord you can change through me that's what it means to be a witness if you go to the court of law those who are judicial people here you do not need a witness until there is a contention is that true when there is a contention in the court of law the judge will ask you do you have a witness the assignment of the witness is to establish and validate truthfulness and a witness is only effective if he comes with a token of truthfulness called evidence evidence you were not there when Jesus died you were not there when he said all authority in heaven and the earth has been given unto me you were not there when your sins was being paid for and yet you are being sent to defend as though you were there but you were not sent alone he sent his holy spirit the spirit of god who was there now in partnership with you and he's sending you to the nations to defend the cause of jesus when you tell this generation jesus saves they say show me when you tell this generation Jesus lifts, they say, show me. Don't just tell me. Listen, the Christian experience is that which demands hearing and seeing, not hearing alone. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. The Bible says, and Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto them. Is that in your Bible? Verse 6, the Bible says, The people with one accord, they gave heed to the things that he said, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. Not only hearing, but seeing. So when you tell somebody, Jesus can turn your life around, show it by the excellency of his power that your life can be turned around. Tonight, precious people of Ghana, the body of Christ in this region and across Africa, and as many who are following, I have come tonight in partnership with the grace upon his eminence to sound a shofar, like Prophet Joel said to do. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm upon my holy mountain that there is a call by the Spirit of God to bridge this gap between authentic Christianity and counterfeit Christianity. Number two, to bridge the gap of fanatism without territorial impact. That we must be able to translate our Christian experience to a context that develops and improves society. That way all and sundry will see us as light and salt and the bible says they will give glory to our father which is in heaven number three the third gap to be closed is restoration of honor i have advocated this i have been an advocate of honor for many years that dishonor never pays as painful as it is honor your government as painful as it is honor your spiritual leaders as painful as it is, honor your parents. As painful as it is, honor all men. For this is what the Bible says. To honor all men, then it says to honor the king. And then number four. Number four. And this is my assignment tonight. A restoration of authentic apostolic and prophetic power to the body of Christ that we will be able to command genuine results. Imagine what will be if every church in Ghana is on fire. Doesn't matter the denomination. Does not matter where. Anywhere demons go to, they are already in trouble. 
They run away from Action Chapel to Takoradi. There is another fire blazing there. He wrote a letter to the seven churches, to the church in Ephesus, the church in Pagamos, the church in Smyrna, the church, all of the, the seven churches that were in Asia Minor, but prophetically they represent the Catholic church, the universal church. There is a message for every church and for every denomination. Let us restore authentic power more than falling down and standing up. The world is tired of seeing people stand up, fall down as a validation to our anointing. The prophet came in and met an economic condition and he said, by this time, tomorrow. Hallelujah. And a foolish man said, even if God will open the windows of heaven, might this happen? The same way we declare the rain to cease. And I'm sure someone was wondering, well, we don't know. Listen, not everybody is faking this thing. Oh, let me tell you the truth. There are people who have a covenant with God. Please sit down. Authority in the kingdom is not luck. It's based on knowledge. Revelations 3.8, it says, I am he that was dead and now is alive. He said, I have the key of David. The key of David is a mystery that opens a door that no man can shut. There are, if you do not have that mystery, you can open a door that men can shut. So that if I tell you now the gates of your destiny, that they be open hither and thither, that you believe. very quickly tonight and then I'll hand over the mic I beseech you by the message of God you have labored and travailed you have endured let your spirit man be open for these remaining minutes that we have to spend because something very defining is about to happen how many of you are yet to submit your prayer request wave it and let me see it oh dear I'm not sure, have, have they been collated? Someone advise me. Okay, here's what I want you to do. For the sake of time and to make the work easy for the ushers. Every row, please pass the prayer request to one person by the end of your aisles. And then that one person, please stand. That one person, please stand. Nobody's reading your request. Just pass it very quickly. Those online, you can submit your prayer request by way of um, the, the links that have been given to you. Let's do that very fast. Just pass it to the last person, either at the left or the right, and then may I request that that person stands. All our officials, the officials, I see that they are wearing um, some jerseys. They would pick it up and then we'll have it here right now. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame and pour your love just a moment please okay no 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 please hold on don't give your seed yet until we pray on it please if you have dropped it that's fine I remember yesterday I have my own two here please be patient it's not just about dropping money it's about the prophetic word that is on it are we together now so please that should be separate from this. If you are, did you add it with the, the prayer request? Okay, so please keep the seed aside. There will be a session for it. That's the last thing we're going to do very quickly. Let's make that fast, please. Just pass it. Officials, please, can you pick it very quickly so we begin to pray? You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. I'm the one, I'm the one, you have shown me mercy, you have shown me mercy, you have shown me mercy, sing I'm the one, yeah. I'm the one, you have shown me mercy, you have shown me mercy.
We are going to pray now. Many years ago, in a crusade like this, the great man of God who has transited to be with the Lord, Reinhard Bonke. Reinhard Bonke was holding a crusade. And I remember I came to that ground and the first day was phenomenal. I saw miracles and supernatural manifestations of the Spirit. By the next day, I made up my mind that I wanted to honor that grace, not just to receive. And so I made up my mind that I was going to come earlier. I came at about 2, 3, and I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs, sick people, and all kinds of people. And I made up my mind to participate. I wanted to do something. Will it be fine if we, where are we going to drop it? Where would you prefer? The altar here? Okay, that's fine. Oh, the ark. Is that fine, sir? Okay, so. Wave every challenge goodbye as it's been dropped here. That these Egyptians you see today, in the name of Jesus, you will see them no more forever. Yes, I'll need two people to hold it for me like this. I hope you don't mind. We need it open because we're about to pray. If Baal be God, serve him. If God be God, serve him. But Ghana tonight, let the God that answers by fire. Let the God that answers by fire. Let the God that heals by fire. Let the God that delivers by fire. Please make sure your request is here. Let's all stand. Thank you for your patience. Let's all stand, please. Water you turn into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. So water you turn, say, water you turn into wine. of the blind there's no one like you none like you wave your hands and celebrate Jesus for one minute, come on our God is greater our God is stronger Lord you are higher than many our God our God is healer awesome and time Ghana our God is greater our God is greater our God is stronger Lord you are higher than many our God is healer awesome in power our God is someone ready to pray shout this from the depth of your heart Say Father, Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I will see them no more forever. Open your mouth and pray. I will see them no more forever. Shabrakata bakatos kata branda gatos, krata kata praskalika paro 
Rakatoskadiata, Rakata Brakatoska de Brendagate Barosiata. Someone is praying. I see them no more. I see them no more. Following by television, make sure you are praying. I see them no more. over my life my ministry my endeavors right now by the power that is in the blood of Jesus I declare my liberty now open your mouth and pray I declare my liberty I declare my liberty by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. I declare my liberty. Someone is praying. Sheba kaparuka toska prende kebereke tosh. Leka prentes kapereke toski abaratos. Sheba kato kaska panakatos. Embra kate baska praska kabeleke tos. Frande kapreska leka tapra kato shaka tarya davados. Embre kaperotos koto prende kaparya tam. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to give you two minutes to pray. You heard the four areas where God is trusting us to bridge the gap. Number one, the restoration of authentic Christianity. Genuine fear of the Lord with character and consecration and christ -like. Number two, to connect spirituality to national and territorial impact that there is a territorial implication to your being godly. Number three, are we still together? Make sure you do not forget this. Restoration of honor to the fatherhood structure within the body of Christ and across systems, across territories. And then number four, the garnishing of your Christian experience with authentic, ever-increasing results, that which comes by the power of the Holy Spirit, validates the hand of God upon your life and brings glory to Him. Is someone ready to? You know the area in your life of this fall where the gap needs to be bridged. In the next two minutes, I'd like you to cry like blind Bartimeo. Lord, show me mercy and mention the area. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. For some of you, you came to this place and you are all shades of compromises. Not to condemn you, but the master calls you to a restoration of an authentic faith practice with character, with consecration. Genuine love for Jesus. Restoration of purity, of holiness, restoration of Christ-likeness within the African church, within the church in Ghana, within the church in Nigeria, within the church in Kenya, every other place, the church in Europe, the church in America. Someone pray. Rekindle my fire. For someone yours is that hitherto it's just been a spiritual experience that does not have the context of being light and 
unsolved. Your spirituality has not imprinted on society, on development, on advancement, on politics, education, all of the seven mountains. There's not been a signature, a validation, an attestation to your spirituality. For someone yours is vocal and outspoken dishonor to fathers of faith. For whatever reason and by any guise, there must be a repentance. That gap must be breached. And I believe the last prayer point affects all of us. The restoration of authentic power. Authentic power. Regardless what degree of the power of the Spirit you have experienced, there can still be more higher realms and higher dimensions. In the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Please stretch your hands towards this prayer request by faith. We are standing under the corporate anointing. We are standing as a church. Regardless denominational divides. Regardless what we agree on and what we do not agree on. The church in Ghana is standing in unity. Above and beyond the walls that divide us. And the petty aspects of the Christian faith we might believe or not believe. For there is one Lord. There is one faith. There is one baptism. And it is in that name that we come tonight. And we're standing here. It's only because you may. We're standing here. Only because you may. We are standing here. Only because you may. You made a way. the wall and it looked as if it was over you Oh, 
or any manipulation of witchcraft activities of ancestry and bloodline you are about to shout Jesus and fire is coming upon you to separate you right now father every covenant every yoke tying down men and women in the name of Jesus as you shout that name upon Mount Zion it says there shall be deliverance and holiness and the sons of Jacob will possess their possessions are you ready now at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I command that spirit out of them now out of them now out of them now release their destinies release their destinies release their destinies release their destinies by the blood of the eternal covenant release their destinies release their destinies let them go I proclaim your liberty this is jubilee for you I blow the trumpet in Zion I sound the alarm upon this mountain Hallelujah. Hear me. Everything that has left you, that was not supposed to have left you, I want to call it back by prophecy. In the name that is above all names, please hear me. I stand as one sent of God and I decree between now and the next 90 days, everything that has left you, I command it to return right now. I command it to return. I command it to return. Let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Hallelujah. Hear me. The Bible says one time the sons of the prophet under the leadership of Elisha they told their prophet they said where we meet with you is too straight. Let us go beyond the Jordan. And the Bible says while they were trying to fell the woods, the axe head fell. And the young man said, Alas, master, it was borrowed. And the prophet came and said, Where fell it? I want to speak to people who are in several financial situations. Debts and all kinds of things that are interrupting your liberty to serve God. Every time there is an economic problem in scripture, the prophetic was the office that was responsible for restoration. I decree and declare right now, in the name of Jesus, let there be supernatural restoration in your finances. Supernatural restoration in your finances. Supernatural restoration in your finances. Hallelujah. By the privilege of God's grace, please hear me. The man standing before you here, I understand what it means to be helped by God. I am a testament of that statement, Ebenezer, that an ordinary man can be helped by God. I want to speak the grace that lifts over someone. I will hold on through the storm I will hold on to your word My life will soon reveal You're the lifter of men The lifter of men I will hold on to the storm Rest upon you now. Hear me prophetically. 
Rise to a new dimension. Rise to a new level in the spirit. Rise to a new level in influence. In the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy Psalm 112 over a family here. I'm hearing in my spirit Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. The Bible said his seed shall be mighty upon earth. Can I pray over your children? The spirit that makes parents weep because of their children. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are exempted from that tragedy. You are exempted from that pain. Ghana, your children will serve the Lord. Ghana, you will never have a generation that will despise Jehovah. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. I decree and declare the generations here and the ones to come be blessed in the name of Jesus. The next verse says wealth and riches shall be in his house. Not that he will go and look for it. It shall be in his house. I decree and declare may the supplies of heaven that make for your efficiency let it be released over you now and then he says and his righteousness endure it forever because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows from tonight I prophesy let there be a mark of distinction upon you in the name of Jesus a mark of distinction upon you in ministry in life and in business in the mighty name of Jesus hear me and for everyone here who is sick in your body we may not have the time to take testimonies but in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God I stand upon the grace of our father tonight and I decree and declare be healed now blood conditions be healed now mental health conditions be healed now bone conditions be healed now no matter what name it is called in the name of Jesus I bring you life and healing in the name of Jesus Christ now please hear me before we do the altar call we're going to receive the sacrifice yesterday I told us and I challenged us based on the integrity of the word of God that as many who have this understanding that you come with a seed to sow is very inconveniencing many times doing this because of the extent of abuse that has happened in the church manipulations that have come through seeds but ladies and gentlemen let me tell you the truth I fear God and I love you too much to deceive and mislead you there is a dimension as it happened to Cornelius it is your prayers and then your giving I have come with my own seed with understanding yesterday we were given room to participate now we have our request here at the altar and I want you to bring out your seed now please and for those who are following online there is no point giving with complaint and grudges that is just a donation that is no longer a seed what makes a seed a seed is not money what makes a seed a seed is love and revelation your understanding but I challenge you by all means in the name of Jesus please bring out your seed let me pray over it then you will sow as we prepare to wrap up this is one conference that you will leave to talk about for many many days in the name of Jesus please look at me 
I hate to sound arrogant and forgive me if I do, but let me tell you the truth. Again, this man you see standing before you is one life that is a testament of what it means to be held by God. I know what it means for God to compel the heart of kings to come to you, even with their resources to bless you. It does not happen by mistake. It does not happen by magic. The Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. It was in a convention like this many years ago. I was instructed and I carried everything that I had, not just money, even in terms of material possession. I put it in a bag and I prayed for three hours nonstop. It was a large meeting like this. There was an overflow outside. So I sat down outside and when everything was done, then people were bringing their gifts and now the Lord asked me to go forward with my own. Nothing much, but I was determined to put of these circles that would keep me bound. I didn't want to do ministry with compromise and I knew that having an authentic message, having an anointing and yet not having financial empowerment would tilt you towards the corridors of compromise. I wanted to do ministry with integrity. It is my creed and my creed forever. But I knew that just making a bold statement that you will not compromise is not how it works. The Bible says, look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that bore thee. It says, for I called him alone and I blessed him. How did he call Abraham? Genesis 22. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest, and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. The Bible says, and Abraham arose early. Obedience, promptly. When he lifted the knife to heaven, and he said, Abraham, stop. From now I know that thou fearest me. He says, I swear by myself that in blessing I will bless you and that in multiplying I will multiply you. Today we jump and we claim that Abraham's blessings are ours and Jesus was correcting the scribes and the Pharisees. He says, if you are truly the children of Abraham, you do the works of Abraham. And in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29, he says, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to promise. So you have to follow after Jesus, the pattern man. He didn't just claim to be the seed of Abraham. He died to validate. He gave himself as a seed. I feel embarrassed to say this, but in the body of Christ, because of this seed, seed, money, money thing, unfortunately, it's been so abused. We have eroded the integrity around prophetic giving. But please make no mistakes about it. Your seed is the instrument of war, even in the play, in a time of famine. The Bible said, and Isaac sowed land, and he received in that same year. Hallelujah. Bring out your seed. Let me carry my own here. I will never preach what I do not believe. I will never tell people to do what I do not understand and what I do not believe. I took time to pray over my own seed and I said, Lord, I may be the preacher you have granted the privilege, but you see the realm of the spirit does not care if you are a preacher. It only rewards practitioners. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you if you do them. Is it alright if I request that we all stand? Please. Many of you will be surprised at the dimensions and the doors that will be open to you by reason of this. Please lift your seed high above your head. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, it says, for without faith is him. Is him. For he cometh unto God must come believing that he exists and then that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We have come with our seeds, not by coercion, not by manipulation, not by the cheap talks of men. We have come, number one, acknowledging that you are Abba, the giver of every good thing. 
Because the Bible says a man can receive nothing except and unless it is given unto him from above. Number two, we have come to use our seeds to connect based on the principle of scripture that as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, day and night, cold and heat will not cease. And then by the mystery of resurrection, that you are able to give our seeds another body that we can sow and reap liberty. We can sow our shame and reap breakthrough. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you will honor the givings of your people. Lord, some of them are giving sacrificially. Some of them are giving from Europe, from US, from Nigeria, from Ghana. Thousands are gathered here lifting up their seeds. Lord, you are not a fraudster. You are not a scammer. I cry unto you in the name of Jesus. Let there be speedy rewards. Let there be supernatural breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus Christ. I connect you to the grace that prospers. The Bible says, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, so that ye, having sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. May that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus, for some of you by this seed, I call for the helpers of your destiny. I compel them to hold your hands and to shift you to the next seasons of your life. In the name of Jesus, some of you are lifting your seeds like Cornelius. I decree and declare the Peter that must be sent to you, dear Cornelius, I compel that he's inspired to meet you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. Therefore, Leviathan, Mammon, we summon you by the integrity of the word of God and we crush your head over the finances of God's people. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you sow this seed with understanding, I declare that you rise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. How do we sow the seeds? Please direct me. Will you walk to... to okay, so I'm going to request very quickly the basket. Please, I know that there are a crowd of people like this and we want to ensure that everything is done with integrity as much as possible. Um, those who need to cast their seeds very quickly, come and do so. Are they coming out? The protocol will guide you just like we did for the first service for the first offering. They will guide you at the major captain. Please move to the boxes closest to you and we'll take it orderly. Thank you very much. Alright, thank you. Very quickly, let's do that in one minute so that I can make the altar call. I need to do that. Very quickly, please. May God bless you. Very quickly, please. Let's, let's have that. Okay. Someone, shall, the worship team can shall we welcome the song for one, two minutes. Let's make that very fast. Okay, we have Simeon in the house. Let's welcome Simeon. From the rising of the sun till the silence. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.